At 2.10 p.m., lookout Leslie Morton spotted the torpedo. Torpedoes coming on the starboard bow, he yelled as loud as his voice could carry. But his response was only heard from Thomas Quinn in the crow's nest. Good God, Frank, he said to his friend Seaman Hennessy. Here's a torpedo. Hennessy saw it for himself and called the bridge. Torpedo! Starboard side! Second officer Hefford, having relayed the message by phone, shouted to Captain Turner, There is a torpedo coming, sir! Before he could take action, the passengers on deck, realizing they had been attacked without warning, braced themselves. There was the sound of a ping. The torpedo slammed into the hull and set off a powerful secondary explosion that sent Lifeboat 5 flying overboard with some debris of coal dust and a column of water into the air. The engine room responded frantically to the explosion in a desperate attempt to cut the flow of steam and stop the engines. In Boiler Room 2, Chief Stoker Peter Doyle reacted to the jet of water rushing towards him. Every man for himself, he encouraged his brother and fellow stokers to the top. As the water burst through the hull into the forward boilers, Hefford threw the switch to close the watertight doors, but the doors did not respond. The ship's electricity had weakened and the steam lines had ruptured before Chief Engineer Bryce could take further orders from the bridge. Quartermaster Johnston had taken a gamble by turning the helm hard over to starboard towards Ireland. Captain Turner hoped that beaching Lusitania would save her, but he didn't know that with the ship's hydraulics having failed from the blast, it was overcorrecting to port on a slowly steeping list. Now the ship was even more difficult to turn. Hefford assessed the situation and feared for the worse. Under Turner's orders, he went down to make sure the watertight doors were closed. This, officially, would be the last time anyone ever saw him. To most of Lusitania's passengers still inside, the explosion was a loud shudder of doubt and misfortune. It was ironic that a retired U.S. Navy commander named Joseph Foster Stackhouse had been mentioning how she could never be torpedoed when the impact occurred seconds later. Rita Jolivet knew that if worse came to worse, she would use her pearl-handled pistol for two reasons suicide or murder. Michael Papadopoulos's premonition from the previous night had come true, and very soon, he would be fighting for his life. Avis Dolphin, sitting in the second-class dining room, watched everything on the tables, dishes, glassware, utensils, spill from the list before she rushed out with her nurses. Aside from a few screams, the dining room was absolutely calm. Elsie Hook felt the ship lurch as she made her way down the stairs to the third-class dining room. She went back outside as Alia, watching her from the stairs and feeling the explosion with dread, did the same.